Hey everybody, I am just getting set up. Uh, let me know how all the audio sounds. I feel like the music is really loud, but I'm not totally sure. Um, and I don't know if my mic is sounding good, but let me know so I can make any fixes before we get going. Also, we're voting on which, which Bonimo you want me to make first in the chat, so jump on that. ASAP. All right, be on in a sec.
All right. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I just went straight into the scene, you know, because you know what? We, I'm already behind schedule here, and I just want to get rocking and rolling. Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today, we're going to be crocheting some bonimals. If you don't know what bonimals are, they're little creatures that I crochet. Here, I have a few on screen. They're really tiny little crocheted things with magnets in their butts and their heads so that they can stack on top of each other. They're a very simple little pattern and just really fun to customize and make a bunch of different animals. Um, you can see I've made a bunch of different kinds already. But today we're going to be making some new ones that's choice is up to you. So I put in the chat a little poll for what to make for our first Bonimal. Uh, it looks like reindeer's winning, but while I'm going through this whole introduction spiel, you can choose what we want to make first. I thought it'd be fine, fun to do some kind of winter creatures. So we got reindeer, penguin, a polar bear, or a walrus. Those are your options today. Wow, my hand looks purple. Let's see if I can fix. There, that looks a little bit better maybe. Eh. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Hope you guys are having a great day. I think I'm just gonna be pretty chill today. I thought, you know, I don't know what it's like where you're at, but here we got a nice gloomy rainy day and it just feels like a nice day to just relax and crochet and not have too much worries. Okay, so let me get to the chat in just a little sec. Uh, you got a few more minutes to vote on that poll. A lot of people are Team Reindeer, and you know, I've already got the yarn out just for the Team Reindeer, but if you want to crochet with me, you're going to need the following materials. Now, I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. You know me, it's the yarn that I really like using for my Amigurumi. It just makes them look really crisp. I really like the way that the stitches look, and it makes it very moldable. For this pattern, we're going to be using a bunch of different colors depending on the animal that we're making. Because reindeer is in the lead right now, I went ahead and I grabbed some colors that I thought would be very reindeer-y. So we got like brown here. This is going to be maybe for the body. This is actually the last of my of this color of brown. I've been using this for a long time and they discontinued this color a long time ago. Um, it, I think it's a lion lion brand cotton yarn. But I thought, you know what, this is a nice special occasion and we won't need too much of it. So let's break into the last of what I got for that brown. I grabbed some darker brown, not maybe for the antlers, maybe using this lighter brown for the antlers. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out together. And then of course I got a little bit of red. That's gonna be for our nose if we end up doing, cause I mean, we got, if we're gonna do a reindeer, we gotta do Rudolph, right? You also need just a little bit of white, that's for the eyes, and then some safety eyes. I'm gonna be using eight millimeter safety eyes today. I got a bottle of eyes like this in the shop if you want to uh, help support the channel. For the crochet hook, I'm gonna be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. It's the best, I think it's the best crochet hook to use with the size yarn that we're gonna be using. Well, of course, we'll need a darning needle and a pair of scissors. Look at how crisp these little scissors look. They look dangerous. I got them in this really cool, uh, like, crochet luggage thing that I bought the other day. It's really cool. But I just love these scissors a lot. Um, and then you might want some magnets, some super strong magnets, if you want to make your little character magnetic. That's what I'll be using today. Let me turn this down just a little bit there. But how's everybody else doing? Everybody doing great in the chat? Hope you're doing great. Cooper's working on a dragon for a secret Santa. Yeah, let me know what you guys are crocheting today. If you want to crochet some bonimals with me, I do have the pattern available right here, clubcrochet.com slash bonimals. The frog pattern is actually free and is kind of like the base of all the bonimals. So if you've never made one before, it's probably a good move to start with a frog. They're super easy to make and just, <laughs> I mean, look how cute they are. And it's kind of a good way to get you like understood on how the whole process works for crocheting these bonimals. Um, let's see, what else? How you can support this channel. If you like what's going on here and you'd like us, like to support, I'm gonna clean my glasses while I say this. 
because they are gross. Jimbo fell asleep on my head and I didn't take my glasses off and so now they're f covered in Jimbo dandruff? I don't know. <laughs> If you want to help support this channel, there's a few ways you can do so. The first easy way is just like this video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. But really, like this video. It, it would be really cool to get this video to have a decent amount of likes. Um, let's say if this video gets 300 likes, we'll do a, a giveaway next live stream. That seems like a fun thing to do. Uh, you can also help support monetarily with... Uh, a membership so if you want to help us su support what's going on here a membership is the best way to do so members get early access to future patterns they get access to the full library of tutorials I have I think I'm un encroaching on 300 of them so it's quite a lot and uh, yeah it's just a great way to support this channel it's only five dollars a month you can even get a free trial if you want to check out the patterns that I got in fact getting a free trial would be pretty a good way to try out this Bonimals, uh PDF because I did put a lot of work into the how the book itself looks. It looks really crisp. Uh, and you can always cancel the membership whenever you want, so that's good. You can also purchase merch kits in the store. I got a bunch of them. And then the last way is with a tip. If you'd like, you can help support the channel with a tip to me, specifically. Look at me rhyming all the time. And if you tip, I will put something out to say thank you. We actually have two tips already. Let me go get our monomal with all the bonomals in it. Oh, wait. There's a bunch of bonomals in this. And you know what? I thought, if how about we do it where if you tip for... More than, if you tip for $15 or more, I'll put something out on the shelf. Let me show you what that looks like. I still need to get the camera right for the shelf, but this over here is a shelf of all the crochet for anybody that has support for a decent amount and it does not go away until we fill this whole thing up. And there are a lot of them. So if you support for $15 or more, I'll put something out for you. Um, actually, we already have one from Cooperlicious that says, Let's go, reindeer. I like that. Let's put out something for Cooper. Thank you so much, Cooper, for your support. I really appreciate it. We're going to be putting out for Coop. What are we going to put out for Coop? Oh, let's put this out. This is really weird, and you know what? I feel like this is Cooper's vibe. By the way, thanks to uh, Blurred Lo-Fi for, for letting us use their music for our background music. Um, I didn't really see, does the background music, is it good? Hopefully it's not too loud. Oh, we got the Stitch fan in the chat. Very cool. We'll talk about them in a second too. So this is what we're going to put out for you, Cooper. It's like a little, here, let's switch it to the other one for a sec. He's like a, I kind of like modeled him off of a Murloc from, uh, from World of Warcraft. Not really. He's like a giant Murloc. He's like a big water creature. I even gave him a little shell on a necklace. He's super cute, but he needs a name. So Cooper, for supporting you, get to name him. So let me know what you'd like to name your uh, Murloc here. Let's switch it back to this. And I'm going to put him right... Actually, we have this whole top shelf now, so let's start putting him right there. I realized that the plant that I had up there was not getting enough sunlight, so I moved the plant over there where it can get some nice sunlight. And now we have a whole new area for filling up too. Okay, so yeah, let me know what you'd like to name that, Cooper. And let me put out something. Let's move all these bonimals out of the way. And let's put out this for Tina, who supported as well. Thank you so much, Tina. It's a little tiny demon that I crocheted. So I just think it's so cute and just so silly. So we're going to put that out for you, Tina, right here. And it's going to be sitting out for our live stream. If you support, I'll go ahead and put something out for you. In fact, you know what? If you support for $15 more, I'll also put something out for you for that too. So that way you can see it on the screen. So for Cooper, we're gonna go ahead and put this little fox out that I crocheted. It's another fox bonimal. And it's just so cute. I still need to finish the pattern for this. Sorry. I have a lot of patterns to finish. I know, I know, and I'm sorry about that. 
All right, well, why don't we get crocheting? That sounds like a good move. It's boiling hot there in Australia, Latchel, and that is a bummer. I'm sorry about that. Here it's nice and cold, which I miss. Ever since moving from San Francisco, it's been just not cold. Okay, so we're gonna be making a reindeer, it looks like, right? Let's, let's stop the vote. Stop the vote. Yeah, reindeer. Okay, so we're making a reindeer. So I think the best way to start with a reindeer is probably to look up pictures of a cartoon reindeer. Usually that's like how I like to start is like looking up pictures of cartoons. So we got a few different cartoon reindeers here. I think this one's a pretty good one to work off of. And it's even got a little Santa hat that we can work with too. Let's see. Yeah, usually in these reindeer cartoons, it looks like the horns are always a darker color than the main color. So yeah, we should use this for our main color. They do have little ears. It'd be cute to do a little tail like that. And then maybe even do a little chest of color, kind of like how we did it for this one here. I think for the nose, it's probably, well, we have a couple options. We can either use like the pig nose from the bottom pattern to give it more of like this snout, kind of like how we did it with the cow. So this could work. Or we could use a bobble stitch instead and make it red, like a little red nose for Rudolph. Let's see. So this is what the bobble stitch kind of looks like. It's a, it's a little ball right here. I kind of think this looks more reindeery than this. I think we'll use the same kind of ears that we use for the cow. It's also the ears. And other than that, and we'll use this kind of tail too, just a little knot at the back for the tail. I think that's probably a good move. The antlers are gonna be tricky. We'll have to make those up or, or, ourselves. We'll have to figure that part out. Um, but why don't we make our body parts that we want to add on first and then work on the body itself. So I think we should probably start with our ears since I think I know how to do that. I haven't made a bottomel in a, ooh, my light. I haven't made a bottomel in a while, to be honest. Like, it's been a month or so since I've made a bottomel. So, bear with me. I'm gonna go and start with, oops. We're gonna start with our ears. How do I make the ears? Aha, there we go. Man, what an in-depth pattern. I am so proud of myself, <laughs> past self, good job. All right, so we're gonna start with these little tiny ears. I think the little tiny ears are the way to go so they don't get in the way of the antlers too much. And when I think of reindeer, I don't really think about the ears as much as I think about the antlers. Let's get our stage a little bit more cleaned out there. That's pretty good, okay. Wild Foxes is crocheting 20 teddy bear keychains. Oh my gosh, wow. Have fun with that. That seems like a lot of work, but that seems pretty fun. Jimbo Slay. <laughs> That'd be pretty cute. We could, yeah, we could attach this. We could attach a Bonhamel to Jimbo. That'd be pretty adorable. Uh, and then we chain one. Pull it tight like that. Cool. I think this will work for our ears, right? Oops. For both ears. This is both. This is both ears. No, I gotta make one more, obviously. I think that should work. We might end up using like. No, actually, I think that I think this should work. I think that should work. Let's do another one. Um. By the way, hi, Stitched Fan. Uh, someone is in the chat that goes by Stitched Fan. Uh, I've been watching their videos for a little bit now. They make, um, they're a really big fan of the game that I created called Stitched, a uh, war that you craft. If you haven't learned about that, you can learn more about that at, at clubcrochet. or no, stitchedthegame.com. But uh, they are a big fan of it and they have been coming out with videos sharing their little 
uh, their characters from the game, um, some crochet patterns for different things like they did a tree stump pattern. It's very cool. Every Sunday he does a little show and tell video and I just think it's, I just think it's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. I mean, I'm biased obviously, but you should check it out. It's very cool. Yeah, hit those thumbs up. Please like this video if you haven't already. Michelle is working on a snowman. Hey, if you haven't heard about this yet we're doing a club crochet challenge right now for a snowman you just gotta crochet a snowman post a picture and then we're gonna choose our favorites to uh to give away a little bit of a membership and for bragging rights of course too so you should check that out you can find more about that at clubcrochet.com slash challenge uh the submissions end in like i think it's around christmas time um, and you have, we're crocheting snowmen. So you crochet a snowman, just give it a theme of some kind. That's the, that's the plan. That's the plan. I don't think my chat's working. It stopped like five minutes ago. Ah, there we go. You can post a picture on, we, we're going to post pictures on Discord, Instagram, or, um, actually those are the two places now. Discord or Instagram. But I explained it all at clubcrochet.com slash challenge, by the way. Okay. The last giveaway was uh, for our hummingbird, or our, our king burb giveaway, and we had uh, five winners. So I let all the winners know via email, so. If you got an email me from me, you won. I, I don't know off the top of my head because I did that like two weeks ago, or a week and a half ago. Um. Okay. Yeah, we do have a Discord. Clubcrochet.com/discord. Links are in the description. Okay, so we did our ears for our our reindeer. The arms and legs are built in. Antlers would be nice, and a nose. Why don't we do two types of nose here? and see which one we want to do. So we're going to start, let's start by doing this for our nose. Oops, I just lost it. There it is. We're going to start by using a dark brown for the nose to just see what that looks like. And then we'll do another one that's red. I think we'll probably go with the red one because doy. But I also have an idea of how to do it with like a bobble stitch on top of this. So that'd be kind of cool. Uh, okay, one, double crochet, two. Uh, any updates on Lava Run? You know, I haven't had a huge chance to put all the new updates on Lava Run. We, I have designed a new one-player mode for the game uh, that I need to get tested, and I need to um, review all the test uh, feedback. I actually didn't get nearly as much test feedback as I was hoping, so... If you want to test out Lava Run, it's still open for testers, and I'm going to release a new wave of testers very soon. I feel like the music is crazy loud. Hold on, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit in my ears. And then I can turn it up in the background. There we go. That should work, I think. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, I do have some more testing I want to do, and we have actually a brand new board for Lava Run that I made, uh, that I had made, so that's pretty cool too. Cut that there. It's fun to like re-remember how I do this, you know? Okay, so I think that could work for the nose. There's that. Um, antlers, I think we should do this dark brown for the antlers. So let's figure out how we're going to do those right now. Now I made some antlers once for a, uh, a moose during one of the live streams. I don't, I think it was like a, like a guess for a giveaway or something. Let me, let's see if we can find the moose. Cause that would be a pretty good thing to work off of for the antlers. If I can find it. I know he's in here somewhere. I got so many that I can't find it. We're just gonna pour this out. Ah, there it is. Okay, so this is what I did for the moose. 
And actually the moose is pretty deer-like. But these antlers are far too thick, you know? This isn't a reindeer antler. Those are clearly moose antlers. They're very different. So we're gonna do something different for the antlers. I don't even remember how I made these. It looks like I did a chain and then, yeah. So we should try something like that. Let's do one, two. We're just making it up as we go. Three, four, five, six. Let's go seven, eight. Let's try that. And then we'll Oops, this is down. I mean, we could do antlers with, actually, that could be kind of fun to do antlers with pipe cleaners and then we can shape them however we want. Although it is a lot easier to crochet them, I'm sure. Um, and then let's do, let's see what happens when we do this. This should pull it in more maybe. No, this isn't working exactly how I want it to, but that's all right. Let's see, let's see what happens when we do a couple chains. And then slip stitch down the chains. I'm just kind of noodling right now to see what happens and what will and won't work. Because this could look like an antler. I just don't know if it's gonna hold its shape is what I'm kind of thinking. It might not it might not hold its shape as well as we'd like it to but maybe it will one we'll do one more here hey you know what actually that that alone might not be too bad let's let's look at what it would look like on a let's just do a frog for right now just to see Hey, you know what, those, that does look like antlers to me. That could totally look like an antler. I mean, it'd be nice to have like one more of these things, but it's pretty small, so we don't have too much room for, for too much detail here. Let's try, let's just try a little bitty bump and see what that go, looks like. And see if we can't recreate what we just did. The bummer is this part is not keeping its curve as much as I'd really like it to. It's keeping it a little bit because we're using cotton yarn and it's easy to like shape into different directions, but I don't think that's a long-term solution. Oh, thank you. Jules brought me some tea. Here. Uh, uh, here. I want you to spill it. I won't spill it. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate you. Tea. Ooh, very hot tea. Yeah. No, thank you very much. All right. Okay. Oh, the stitch fan has a flu. Well, I'm sorry about that. But I hope you get better soon. That could work as an antler, I think. I think that could work as our antler. Yeah, let's go ahead, cause look at that. That looks pretty, that looks pretty crisp to me. That was pretty easy to make. I think, let's see, if I like bend it out, will it, hmm. See, I just wish it held, I mean, it is holding its shape not bad. It'd be nice if I had like starch or something to like, ch -ch -ch -ch, so it'd hold its shape even better. But it's not, it's not, actually it's not messing up as bad as I thought it might. So let's try another one of those. Um, I think it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's how I did it. And then we did one, two. Yeah. Okay, so I chained eight and then I'm gonna slip stitch into the back loops only two. I'm just explaining this so that if anybody else is out there and they're like, I want to make a reindeer too. This is how I'm doing it. So I chained eight, slip stitch in the back loops two, and then I'm going to do a, a a decrease in the next two back loops. Like 
that, which is the kind of the idea that to help it pull it in more and like make it curve. It's not curving as much as I'd like it to, but so we might need to do something else there. And then, and then I think we chain three to do our next antler section. And then we slip stitch into the back loops of two of them to get back down to the base here. Like that. Let's see what we got. A lot of tweaking involved. Okay, so we slip stitch two and then we'll slip stitch another two, one, two, and then yeah, okay. That this could I think this is gonna work. And I'm going to make is is this gonna be an official pattern? Um maybe I might be able to do that. I've got a lot going on right now. Um a lot of things I'm not totally ready to share yet, but Suffice to say, you'll know about it soon. And uh, it's not bad news. It's just new news about Club Crochet and stuff. We're, we're kind of shifting stuff a little bit. And I'm trying to figure out... We're basically trying to figure out how next year is going to go. And so there's just been a lot on my mind. And a lot of pattern work and just design work that I've been doing the past few weeks to, to get everything sorted so that I can share information with you. Okay, so this I think will work as an antler. Now we can always make antlers again in a different way if we want to, but I do think that looks pretty good. I think that will look pretty good. So we'll work off of this for right now. We'll probably want to do something different for the nose and maybe the ears too, but let's go ahead and get working on the body now. So how's everybody else been? You guys been working on anything new? How's your uh, happy December? Last month of the year. Happy December, happy holidays, whoever's out there celebrating. Um, we just got some Christmas lights up in, in this rainbow room here, but I still need to put them all outside. And I need to get a Christmas tree still. But it's just the first, you know, I think I, it's going to be fine. It's fine. Oh, okay. We need to go back to the frog pattern because that's what we're working off of. Okay. Round one. One, two, three, four, five. Four. One, two, three, four, five. And then six. Okay. Got it. Vicky's been sick with the flu. Sorry. Gosh, everybody's sick. Catalin hasn't been able to crochet because she's been in school. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I used to crochet in school all the time. I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying that's what I used to do. <laughs> all right, we're using white for the eyes now. I'm enjoying the chillness of this stream though. Oh man, Cooper's sick too. Everybody's sick. Wow. Stitch fan has been crocheting a lot of goblinoids. Heck yes. Gotta love it. Oh, I'm supposed to do a single crochet and then a, oops. So we can undo that. One, two, this will be three here. And then we'll get this involved. All right, I think we're gonna use eight millimeter eyes uh, today because I think it's it'll be night it'll be cuter and I feel like I don't know a reindeer sounds really cute to me instead of silly. I mean silly. Obviously, it's gonna be a little silly. It's something that I made. If it's if it's not silly and I made it, then I don't know. I don't know. Something's going wrong. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go one. I'm starting to have flashbacks. I'm starting to remember this pattern now. Two there. I got fuzz in my nose. Jimbo's, Jimbo's been getting his fuzz all up in me. All up in my nose. One. Another one right 
here. Next, by the way, uh, I'm, I'll probably be telling you this a few times, but next live stream next uh, is going to be ne same time next week. So Thursday, 3 p.m. We're going to be crocheting snowmen. Um, I'm really excited about that. I actually really need to rework the pattern because uh, I have a few different things that I want to add to the pattern. Um, and that's next month's Club Crochet kit. So that's coming. If you're a Club Crochet Pro member, that should be coming to you on Monday. We're going to ship it out. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we're not making snowmen next week. We're making a uh, we're making a gift box and a gift. So we're making gifts. So if you want to uh, get prepared at all, we're going to be crocheting uh, a gift box and just a bunch of just random gifts for for some loved ones. Getting you know ahead of schedule here so that we don't have to freak out at the last second and be like, oh no, we forgot to get someone a gift. And we'd be like, ah, that's right, I crocheted a gift. That's the idea. Ooh, I got a good back crack, I think, coming. Oh, yeah. You didn't hear it, but it was a good one. All right, let's try this tea out. That's tea, all right. Mmm. Warm. Oh, you know when you need to take the first sip of tea, and then it hits you right in the bottom of your stomach, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's, that's the good stuff. Crocheting is a magic spell. I agree. Crocheting is a magic spell and and a crochet hook is your wand. Yep, yep, yep. Agreed. All right, so now I'm on to, let's see, we're doing round three now. Three. Any good suggestions for TV? Or movies that you guys have seen recently I just watched the Guardians of the Galaxy movie uh, or like the holiday special yesterday and I loved it I'm a big fan of Guardians of the Galaxy in general though so it wasn't that crazy for me to know that I was gonna enjoy it <laughs> but it was really good highly suggested I saw a trailer for the new movie came out today but I haven't seen it yet Bye, Abi, Abia, Abiha, Abiha, Jane the Virgin. I gotta check that show out. Never heard of that one. We've been watching. Uh, we just watched 1899. Uh, it's on Netflix, and no spoilers at all for that. But that show is so good <laughs> big big suggestion check that show out it is a weird one though like it is so cool though oh my gosh i i really highly suggest it check it out 1899 it's on netflix and it's a really good show it's really fun and like mysterious the movie fall i haven't seen that Ooh, we're watching regular show you know I have only watched some of regular show and I've always known that it is so my vibe like regular show is is exactly my vibe so I've always kind of like had it in the back burner to watch later is 1899 scary I wouldn't call it scary I call it like maybe spooky but there's no like jump scares uh you don't have to worry about like like, I don't think it's a horror film. It's more of like a thriller or like a mystery or like, like, it messes with your, with your mind a little bit. You're like, what's going on? And you're trying to figure it out. So I don't think it's scary as much as it's just like mysterious, maybe. How's the focus going here? I feel like I'm out of focus. There we go. That looks a little bit cleaner. All right. Um, oh, you know what? Okay, wait, we need to think for a second because we do want to do a stomach. You know, we want to do like a little beige tummy just to give it a little bit more flair. So how do we want to do that one? One, two, one, two, three. So probably that stitch needs to be a half color change, right? Right here, whatever this stitch is needs to be a half color change. And that's gonna actually be in the round we're currently on, I think. It's gonna be one, two, Oh yeah, in two stitches. Wow, good timing there. 
Unless we want to do more than two. Now let's just try a little tiny one. Okay, I know what to do. So I'm gonna do after my increase, my first increase in round, I think I'm on round two, three, four. After my first increase, I'm gonna do two stitches regular. There's one, and we're gonna say that's two. And then the third one, I'll do a half color change with beige. Just so that the top of the stitch is beige, and that way when I come back around, it'll um, like prepare me for some color changes. And this way we'll have a little beige tummy to work with, just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. Should probably do a little Santa hat too. Maybe, maybe a little Santa hat. I don't know, I don't know, baby. Now we'll see how this goes and then work off that if we want a Santa hat or not. But see, I think that single stitch is gonna work with, for us pretty well. The movie fall. Catalan, this this stream is so chill. Thank you. I, I'm definitely I'm definitely trying to give off a chill vibe for sure because I'm feeling very chill today. You know, I woke up and I was like, you know what? Why don't we just keep the vibe slow and steady and December? Let's feel a little December. We'll get a little silly later on this live or this this month. You know, make some weird stuff. I mean, and just like I'll pump the energy up for you. But today I just feel like I don't know. I'm just kind of going with the flow, not not making it a big deal. I think that's a more I think there's just more my style today. Every day is a little different. Okay, so now we're gonna come around to this increase here, or to this uh, color change. So we need our beige again. My friend's 30th birthday is on Saturday, um, and I'm going over to there. It's it's actually really close to here. The party is like only a few, like five minutes away from where I live. Uh, but the theme of the party is Night of a Thousand Moiras. And if you ever seen the movie Shit's Creek, uh, it's a movie or it's a TV show on Netflix. Uh, it's themed after a character in that named Moira. So it should be, you have to dress as, as Moira. So I have barely seen that show. I've seen a few episodes. So today after this live stream, I've got to do my research and figure out a good costume for this party. It's just such, what a silly idea for a party. I love it. I can't wait. Ooh, okay, cool, Clayton. Good to know. Fall will definitely mess with your mind. That is totally my style. I like it. I, I like it. I want to see it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so then another increase right here. We're going to have to do, I think I'm going to have to whip out an old stitch for our feet to give our deer some hooves. Now usually what I have been doing is just doing like straight up full on color changes. So the hooves would kind of be like this, but dark brown, which we totally can do. But I think what might look better is if we do half color changes in the in the legs themselves, which is a an extremely tricky technique. Um, and I usually, I don't use it very often anymore because it's such a, it's such a complicated technique to like teach. Uh, so I try not to do it for my patterns because it's just like, it's just not worth it. But you know what? Today I'm feeling a little risky. So maybe we should give it a shot. We got one more round before we need to make that kind of decision though. We're at the place where the feet go. So that foot would go here and then there's one there and then another foot would go here. And then we'll need our beige yarn for the tummy again. Let's see how that goes. You know what's gonna be fun? Well, 
I'll make all these little characters and then we can hide them around or give them to people as gifts. I can hide them in my neighborhood. Perfect, there we go. See, there's our little tummy. And we'll do, we'll add a nose. So let's give it a little idea here. There's our nose. We've got antlers, ears on the side. Here's what the antlers will look like. Antlers will really bring it home. Then the little ears in front of the antlers. Little nose, like right there. We're gonna do a red nose, I think. And then cute little eyes and we'll have a, yeah, we'll have a deer. We'll have a deer. Now, the thing that I was thinking we could do is we could do another nose like this, but do a bobble stitch in lieu of a single crochet. So it'll have like a little red nose. Um, I think that'd be really fun. I think that'd be a fun thing to try. So we'll try that in just a second too. But I think we should probably make our legs first and then try that. Um, I believe that's our last stitch. Yes, in that round. I gave it a little tuft of hair on the top just because I think that's adorable, but it'll probably be covered up by a maybe a Santa hat or something. If I watch Fall, let you know what I think of it. I definitely will, Clayton, for sure. And yeah, I'll I'll check it out. Uh, I'll check it out probably maybe even tonight. I might I might be able to check that out tonight because it sounds like something Jules would really enjoy too. And we kind of we both are I think in a very chill mood today, so that sounds like a fun thing. Um. All right. Oh, Bonimo Puppet Show. That'd be pretty fun. Oh, what can I do for a Bonimo Puppet Show? That's such a cute, fun idea. I love that. You're you're gonna get my brain a brain cooking. I'm gonna start coming up with ideas for that. <laughs> a Bonimo Puppet Show. I think I gotta start by coming up with a poem, or you know, I I guess it's less of a poem, more of like a. I don't know, story. I like it like a Dr. Seussian. Uh, what are those called? They're not like poems. They're like uh, limericks. No, limericks are shorter, I think. Okay, let's try this little foot thing technique that I'm going to hopefully not botch. All right, so I, if I remember correctly, it's you yarn over with that one, then you change over to the other one, and then we'll do the part with the foot, and then we switch back over and pull through two. Like that. See, so then, let me zoom in a little bit. I don't know if you can tell what's going on here, but just for just for clarity, you see how see how the top of the stitches are going to be brown and the bottom are going to be, or like dark brown and then the bottoms are going to be light brown. That way, it'll give it some like hoof attention there. So let's try it again. We'll go yarn over this one and then I switch over to our other color, and then I go into the stitch. Pull a loop through, and then I switch back over, yarn over, and pull through with that darker brown like that. And we want to do that four times to give it its look. So let's do it. Let's just let's just go ahead and finish this one with the camera up close so you can see it. Just because it's, I think this is kind of a fun, just a fun weird technique. Like that. It's how I used to do like shoes and stuff. When I wanted to do like the least amount of work possible to make feet. But there you go. See, that'll give it like just a little bit of a hoof kind of look. That's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. All right, let's zoom this out. What do you think about that? Oh, my eyeball itches. There we go. 
Claire, welcome back to the live streams. Thanks for joining. We're doing a nice chill live stream today. Making right now we're making a reindeer. What do you think we should make after that? What got the second amount of votes for that for the choices there? I think it was maybe polar bear did or it might have been penguin. I'm not totally sure. Anybody else know? Two. Oh, we need to get our beige yarn prepared because we're going to have to change colors to do the belly again. So, yeah, see how we're getting we're just we're making nice making it nice and complicated. But it's funny cuz like I go through all this effort to make it like extra complicated for how to make it, but it's still in my opinion less complicated than sewing things together. I really don't like sewing things together. <laughs> it's like my biggest pet peeve for crochet. All right. I know it's not really that bad, but it just it's just kind of like I don't want to. All right, now we're gonna change over to beige and do a few stitches in beige for our belly. One. Get more yarn. Is there four between the feet or is it three? I don't remember. Three. So one, two, and this will be three. Yes, okay. Change to our light brown. Like that. Let's look at how our guys come together. That's looking pretty good, actually. I, I made the stitches really tight, which I think is gonna be very helpful in making sure it looks like clean and crisp, you know? Penguin, ooh, fun. Okay, cool, we'll do a penguin after this. That'll be fun. I'll do a baby penguin. The trick with the baby penguin is there's not really any wing, or there's not really any, like I can't do this bobble stitch technique for the feet. So it won't really be a bonhomal, I don't think. It'll be more of like our own design for just a little tiny penguin. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I think that'll be fun. I think, I think so. There we go. One. Okay. Keep this going. This part's getting complicated because of the added beige in there. And I'm just, I should have really cut it, but I didn't. So now I have to just deal with it in our way. As I figure out what colors to pull through where. But I'm making sure that these stitches, this bobble stitch is really tight. See how all the stitches are like really tight? I think that's gonna keep it, keep it looking crisp. Keep our stitches looking crisp. There we go. Change it back over to the brown and pull that through. All right, now this beige is done for. We don't need it anymore. We'll go ahead and cut that one. Oh, you want us to make an emperor penguin? I need to do a burb version of a penguin soon too. By the way, oh my God, guys, the last live stream when we made our king burb, I'm obsessed with that burb. It is so freaking funny. Every time I look at it, it just makes me laugh. Jules thinks we should name him King Borb. Someone that was someone's suggestion. And you know what? I am I'm pretty I'm pretty on that. I think that's a good I think it's a good name for him. I, I was thinking King Borb the Bulbous or something like that. You know, because then it gives like an idea of like him having a title on top of his yeah, you get what I'm saying. If uh, anybody in the chat not uh, was not there for the King Burb live stream, if you weren't, let me show you it just in case. After I finish this round. There we go. 
Okay. We do not have a lot of this light, this dark brown left, unfortunately. Okay, that's the end of that round. We got our feet. Look how nice this guy's looking. I can I can see it personally. Pretty pretty well. I think we should start by adding our eyes. Oh wait, no, that's right. I wanted to show you King Burr. Someone wasn't there. Playing with fire was not there. Okay, so this is what we ended up making last live stream. You're gonna love this. This is King Borb. The the King Borb the Bulbous. He's got a super duper strong magnet in his base. Like it's crazy strong. He's got his little, uh, what do we call this, a scepter? And it's got a little egg in it for his successor, obviously, and some nice cute little rubies on it. And he's got his nice uh, cape. But the best part of King Borb is his underhead. It's <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's so dumb. Oh my god. I love this thing. It's so stupid. I love him. Good boy. Good king. He rules the kingdom with a... An iron beak. Alright. So let's add our eyes now. I think adding the eyes first would be probably a smart thing to do. Because I think it's going to be pretty hard to add the eyes afterwards. Again, bottle eyes in the shop. Great way to support the channel. Okay. This is how I like to add the eyes. Go. We're gonna have to tweak it a little bit. Kind of like this. Make sure we got white on both sides of the eyes as much as we can. It's pretty good. We'll do the other one over here. Okay, other eyeball. I'm gonna have to fix that a little bit. But... Did I lock the first one in? No, I didn't. Okay, let's lock them both in. I don't know about that locking mechanism. Eh, it's okay, it'll work. It'll work. There we go. Oh, Caitlin, it's 2 a.m. Oh my gosh. Well, it sounds like you're gonna be out for the count pretty soon. If you end up falling asleep during the live stream, thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry, it's so light. All right, so we got our eyes. Let's, um, do we do antlers or, ear? oh yeah, wait, you know what? We gotta do ears first. So we'll do ears and then the antlers right behind it. And then we'll add our, and then we'll figure something out for the mouth or for the nose. So this is how I like to do the ears. Let's use this stitch. And we'll go there and there, I think is the trick. Okay, and 
then I think we'll come up right here. That tight, pull that tight, and then around this. All right, that's a good ear. <laughs> He's looking kind of like a little doggy right now, which is pretty cute. I think the nose and the antlers are really gonna take it home. Yeah, the antlers I think above everything else is going to be our real winner there. But we need to try doing a nose with a red dot on it first, because I just want to see if that'll work. And then we can do and if that doesn't work, we'll just do a fully red nose. Magnets. How do they work? Okay. One ear. And the antlers will go literally directly behind it. Maybe even in the same stitches. Yeah, that'll be cute. I don't think we need a Santa hat if we give it a red nose. I think everybody's gonna get the gist of who we got here. Okay, so this one we need to cut a little shorter. He kind of looks like a Minecraft frog. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit, yeah. JNF Productions. Ooh, cool. You just can't end it. You're making the new legendary Pokemon from Pokemon Scarlet. You know, I haven't played the game yet, so I don't know what that Pokemon looks like yet, but that is really cool. That is way cool. It's probably taken you quite a long time. You're, you're probably very proud of it, but also I can, I can guess that you're also a little bit like, oh, I just want to finish this project. That's how I usually am with those big ones. I think it's like this stitch and this stitch is where we want to work with. Are you caught? Are you stuck at any point? You said you're having a hard time ending it. What do you mean by that? There we go. See, I cut the other one shorter so that when I pulled it through, I could pull it far enough so that the inside one that I know I don't want to use gets pulled out and then the outside one stays with the crochet hook. Because basically I'm a genius. <laughs> or basically I've made a lot of these and I remembered a, a quick trick. This might be too high up for the ear, but let's find that. Let's find out. It's not the direct middle, so might be good. Let's see. And the other antler. Go like that. This here's a little weird, huh? I think we just need to pull it tighter so that it gets pulled into the head a little bit better. But we also need to be careful because we might break this yarn if we're not careful. I need this knot in the piece if I can get it in there. If it doesn't want to work with us, then that's just the way it's gonna go. But it'd be really nice if it did. We're gonna use this end again to help try to get this ear into the position we want it to be. So it stops fighting us. So we want this knot into the body. That should do it. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, now let's double knot these. 
one and two. So I watched a video today about um, how the dinosaurs, so when the dino when the asteroid that hit the earth that killed the um, vast majority of the dinosaurs uh, hit, if it was 10 minutes later, everything could have been different. Isn't that crazy to think about? 10 minutes later, because it would have hit in a different spot, it would have hit in a different angle, and both of those things combined would have like saved a lot of lives of all these creatures. Now, do we want the ears to go, let's see, do the ears, we want higher or lower than the horns? I think we want the, you know what? Let's just use the exact same, let's just try to sew it, the ears or the antlers into the same exact places as the ears are and see if that works. That actually might, that might work for us. That might work for us. The thing I'm worried about is getting these knots through these stitches that are already kind of stretched out it might be a little difficult, but let's find out. Maybe it won't be. One, that one's through, and then this one, <clears throat> that one's through, that one's through, okay. Let's double knot it, and I'm not even gonna look. We're gonna hope that it's right. If it's not, yikes. All right, let's see how this goes. Obviously we need to tweak it, but you know what? That's pretty good. I think that, what do you guys think? That's a pretty good antler, I think, in my opinion. I think that's totally working for us. And we'll do the other one over there in the same spots too. Uh, the other antler might be a little bit trickier because of how I had to sew this other ear on. But let's hope and pray. One, and then this other side right here. Trying to give it a little bit of room as I figure this part out. There we go. Okay. Let's hope this gets pulled in and doesn't fight us too, too much. Too, too much. One, two, just as tight as I can. It is a catast catastrophe on the inside of this reindeer. All the stitches everywhere. Weird. It's pretty good. All right, we're gonna cut these short and then look at what we've just done. Because I like to take risks. All right. tweak and that's good I think that's pretty good actually that's that looks like a reindeer I mean it doesn't have a nose and the eyes are a little wonky but besides that looks to me like a reindeer fix the eyes pretty easy that but you know what for a noseless reindeer, that's not that bad. All right, let's see what we can do with uh, the very small amount of brown yarn that we have here. I don't think this is gonna be enough for what I wanna do with it, but it might be. My idea here is to do the nose, just like how we did it before, but use a red yarn here. Use some red yarn and do a bobble stitch into the actual center here. It's gonna be tricky, but I think this might let us get a little red dot on the nose and still make it look a little, I don't know. 
I don't know. Let's just see what happens. Okay. And then now I want to do a bobble stitch. So one. I think I could just do a mini bobble. Two. Three. And then switch back to that. And then do our half double crochets. One. Two. And then we'll pull it tight. Like that. And then we can slip stitches first and see how that did it. And I can't believe we still had any brown left at all, actually. But we do. I'm gonna use these red ones to sew it on if I choose to use this. But what do we think about doing this for the nose? Is this good? No, it looks kind of like a dog's nose now. I don't think that looks like a deer's schnoz. What do you think? Look like a deer schnoz to you? I don't think so. All right, so let's try to do just maybe something smaller with the red and see how that looks. Like just a simple, like maybe four single crochets in a magic loop and see how that goes. You know, like a very small dot. One, two, three, let's just do four. Is that gonna be too small though? dot like that big let's do five Let me pull this tighter it'll give us a better idea of it yeah I think this works let's try it that nice and tight Slip stitch into the first, just like how we did with the other nose. And stretch it out a little bit. All right, let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. Like that? That's pretty cute. It's clearly, I mean, if I saw that, I would be like, yeah, that is a, clearly a reindeer. Right? That's what we're going for. Nutty flowers, hello. I've got a bit of like a, I can feel my like a headache starting right here. Isn't that weird? I don't know. So I'm like massaging my sinus just in case. Okay. So we're going to go Let's sew this on. Let's just let's go with this for the nose and stop thinking about it. Hi Jiminy. Can you guys hear Jimbo? He's complaining out there. I think Jules is downstairs painting right now, which is pretty cool. She's been doing a lot of pour painting. You guys ever done pour painting before? Pour, pour painting. No. This goes here. Like that. And then this one. Get so down like this. And I think we could do something to make it a little bit more secured onto the face, but I also don't think we really, well, yes we do. I thought, I thought we wouldn't need to, but it does seem to be like whole, pulling the nose upwards a little bit. See, I don't want it like that. We want it to be attached, so. So, okay. What do we think about that? Oh, that's cute. That's super cute. 
right? Clearly a reindeer. Clearly. Oh, Zoe doesn't like it. Thinks it should have been a smaller little red dot. Big one looks clowny. Yeah, I kind of agree, but you know, it adds to the goofiness of the bonimals. You know, it's kind of like part of the part of the vibe of these bonimals is is the goofiness, so that's at least my excuse. And then we'll just do a little tail at the end after we sew it together. That looks pretty good though, I think. I think this is gonna work for a reindeer. How do you feel about it, guys? I hope you like it, cause I'm not redoing it. <laughs> All right. Let's start decreasing it down. Uh, we need one decrease first, and then we can um, add our magnets. Are we going to make Santa too? I've actually already made Santa. We have a Santa pattern on the website. It's a tricky pattern, but, you know, he's Santa. He takes a little bit of effort. All right, JNF Productions, thanks for joining. All right, I think we're going to do one more Bonimal tonight, and then... uh make it a somewhat short live stream for us i mean it's not that short we did start at three it took us way too long to make this reindeer but you know perfection takes time okay the tail is going to come as the last part after we're done sewing it together so we don't need to worry about that as much I do you want to get this fuzz out of there just a little bit okay uh, all right, so now we want to add these in there. So I'm going to do two on the top and use a something like this to make sure it's up the right way. Tuck it just above the eyes. And then actually we're going to use a few more than that. So I always like to do this where I use another like use a bunch of other magnets to make sure it is facing, like the magnets are facing the right way on the head. And then we'll stuff it. We don't need very much of this. Oh, it's a very soft stuffing. I'm, I'm getting our dinosaur kits made in a new way and they give us like this, we got this new stuffing for it. It's so soft, it's very soft stuffing. And it fills your pieces like way more with the smaller amount of stuffing. It's very interesting how different stuffing worked like that. I never really, I've really explored stuffing very much, but it does seem to be to work a little bit differently. It's kind of cool. All right, now I'm gonna just do a hard, a sharp decrease here on the last round to really make sure that it sits flat. Because I found, I've been using like, every now and then I use the invisible decrease for this last round for the bonimals. Um, but I found that if I use the sharp decrease, it does sit a little bit flatter. So we're going to go with that today. I don't think we actually need any more stuffing because I think that was enough stuffing for it. Okay. Yeah, he, well, okay, maybe just a little tiny bit more stuffing. Just a little bit though. Like that's even too much, that much. Just, just for safekeeping. And then we'll take, I'm gonna do three. We're gonna give him a, we're gonna make sure that he has a little bit more oomph to his to his uh, grip. Usually I use two, but I don't know, I'm feeling generous. <laughs> I'm feeling generous. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, in hindsight, I probably should just use the bobble stitch for the nose. It would have saved us time and made it look a little bit less big, but I didn't do that. So, oops, too little too late. Now we're gonna go right in here and give him a tail. Is Rudolph a boy or girl? Oh, so my dad, oh, so my dad dresses as Santa Claus every uh, Christmas. He's um, he's a very uh, jolly man, if you catch my drift. I mean, his belly. And uh, he's got a long white beard, and honestly, he looks like Santa Claus right now. Big time looks like Santa Claus. And so he just got a really cool, like, Santa outfit for Christmas so that he could, like, do you know, be Santa at like, a, a, not at the mall, but like for events and stuff like that. And on his, oh, that looks pretty good, guys. Okay, I'll, I'll finish telling you about that in just a second. But what do we think? I think it's a, that's a reindeer. In, in my opinion, that is a reindeer. There's our little tail. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. That's <laughs> so cute. I love it. I love it. And then here it is. So you can see. It has got, oops. These aren't very magnetic scissors. Let's do, yeah, these are good scissors for this. Oh, he does not have the grip that I thought he was gonna have. Oh yeah, it does. It just needed to be moved over a little bit. Fits the bottom style. Thank you, Naughty Flowers. I appreciate it. Olivia, thanks for joining, Olivia. Hey, everybody, if you haven't yet, make sure to like this video, please. That'd be cool. All right, so we got a reindeer. Next up, you know what? I'm gonna do another poll because I just wanna be sure that this is what the crew, what you crew want. Do you want, what's next? A penguin, a walrus, or a polar bear? If we end up, do, if we do the polar bear, I'll give it a Santa hat. If we do the penguin or the walrus, I mean, maybe I'll give it a Santa hat still. Which one do you think? Ooh, I am pro, I think I'm pro polar bear personally. If we do polar bear, we do need to get fuzzy yarn for this because we can't, we can't have a not so fuzzy polar bear. Well, actually it could work pretty well. We have fuzzy yarn anyhow. In fact, I have like a ridiculous amount because I've been winding all the yarn for all the snowman kit. So I have like a bunch of this extra white uh, fuzzy yarn. This will look pretty cute. If we end up doing the polar bear. Okay, we're gonna try to get it to, maybe we can do 30 votes. There's not that many people in the live streams today. So we might not even get to 30, but I'll let you guys vote a little bit more. Let me have some tea. Do I have a Santa in Bonhamel style? No, I don't. I haven't done any Bonhamel humans yet. Um, but I'll show you the Santa. Let me see if I can find it. Let's see here. I don't know where it is. Is there such a thing of having too much amigurumi? 
because I can't find it. Let's switch screens. I'd like to show you this. Oh, this is where I'm searching in for the Santa. Can you see it on the outside anywhere? I don't see it. I mean, there's so much in here too. A couple of dragons. I gotta organize this. It might be in a different, in a different box too. But I feel like it would be in here. Should be in here. Well, I can't find Santa. He's probably out like working, you know? Huh, okay. I don't know where Santa is. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Penguin or polar bear? We only got 22 votes. You still got a few few more minutes. Yeah, this next kit's gonna be pretty fun. We're making a customizable snowman. It's a little hat. And I'm working on some uh, other bits of it. Let me see, where did I put it? Here, wait. There we go. So the previous, the previous snowman pattern, I did antlers. So you can do like antlers or a little red nose. And this kit's gonna come with all the materials for that. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a version with little elf ears too. So I made, so I'm gonna, I'm working on this part of the pattern for it so that you can add elf ears to your snowman if you wanna do elf ears instead of antlers. But it should be pretty fun. Isn't this a cute, I gave this one a big old nose. I wanna see how big of a nose I could use, I can make with the yarn that's in the kit. It's a pretty good one. Anyhow. 30 votes. We are one, we are at a one vote difference here. Come on. Okay. I think it's time to call it for our vote. Wow, that's a close vote though. Polar bear barely above the penguin. We're gonna end it there. All right, guys, we're doing a polar bear then. All right, so for a polar bear, hmm. Now we gotta start thinking about how we're gonna do a polar bear. All right, so we need to do, we need to try with this fuzzy yarn. I think I need to double this yarn up to make the polar bear have like enough like oomph. So it's not like a tiny itty bitty polar bear. So we're gonna try to double this up first. I think the ear actually can be done the same. Well, what does a polar bear's ear look like? Actually, no, the polar bear's ear is like more round, huh? Yeah, I think that's how it goes. So let's do a little tiny round ear. We'll just do like a little one. When will the new Bonneville patterns be out? I mean, as soon as I can, but I there's just like so many, like people, We've been getting a lot of requests <laughs> for different patterns. Make this, make that. And it's like, I'm doing, I, I, I soon. <laughs> I'm working on it. One, two, I think we can just do like a little tiny one like this. I think just three is fine. Ears, large, small ears I do one, yeah, we'll do three. We'll do three single crochets. Killian, what happened to Louis Loops? He's right here, that's me. I am Louis Loops. 
I just don't post on that channel as often anymore because uh, Club Crochet is just taking a lot more of my time and so, yeah, but I'm still around. I exist. I'd like to start posting more stuff there sooner or later. So we're just gonna go with that. Little tiny adorable ears. Polar bear actually should be pretty easy as far as like our pattern goes. Cause I think we can keep to like a relatively similar bottomal style and just do like a, actually we might even be able to handle a bobble stitch for the, the snout. Two, three. All right, Clayton, thanks for joining. Make sure everybody eats and has some water. Is Loops my surname? Not yet. All right, cut that. <laughs> and we're gonna do this. So I think that's good. One, two, three. We did these the same, right? Yes, those are, okay. So that's gonna be cute little ears. You can see it, right? I can imagine it. Very cute. All right, next, uh, I actually don't think we need a lot as far as like body parts to sew on. We might want to add, we might want to add a Santa hat, but we can do that afterwards. We don't need to have a Santa hat right now. So let's just go ahead and get started on the body of our, of our, of our, uh, polar bear. And we're doubling up the yarn. So he's going to be a little bit chunkier than everything else, which I think is a really good move. Do you know that polar bear's fur is actually translucent? It's not white. It's it's in it's translucent. Kind of kind of weird. One, two, three, four, six. I also kind of am wondering if we want to do our polar bear with no, like the eyes as just dots instead of doing like our bobble stitch eyes, like I did for these ones. Maybe we just do little dots for eyes. How do you guys feel about that? Hmm, maybe. I mean, we might also be able to do another polar bear using just one strand of this instead of doing two, and then you can have a mama and a baby. That could be kind of also really cute. But let's start, let's start just normal. One, I mean, we gotta make our eye decision up right now. Do we want just little dot eyes or do we want actual bobble stitch eyes? Okay, cool. I'm glad you agree, Emma and Zoe. It is weird how their black noses don't give them away while they're hunting. That's actually a really, it's a good point. Okay, so then if I don't need to do that for the eyes, we can just do the, uh, just a regular old round then. Yeah, it could be pretty easy. Oh shoot, this might be actually crazy easy pattern then. But look how much bigger, it's gonna be bigger for sure, which I think is accurate, you know? That is apt. We're talking about a polar bear here. Uh, and then we'll, we'll try to do a nose. Let's try to do a nose with the bobble stitch to save us some effort of like actually crocheting a new nose on top of it. Um, how do I do the first round again? Increase, oh, three. Oh yeah, okay, so one, two, three, and then an increase right here. One, two, perfect. Okay, and then two, and then we'll do a bobble stitch here for our nose. One, two, 
three. I'm just going to do a mini bobble. And see how that goes. The good thing is because the patterns should be a lot more simple. It shouldn't be too hard to like. I'm trying to like just imagine a polar bear, you know. I think we're going to do a mini bobble for the tail also. So that way it has like a little bump at the back of the tail. One, two. See, and then so we'll do I, I. Ay, ay, ay. And then two little ears. We'll do a little bit of a nose right there. And then just a bo bobble on the back. We'll do a quick little Santa hat. And then maybe we'll make a baby because this pattern is so simple. And I can even explain the pattern as I go for the baby to just come up with a new pattern. That could be kind of fun. But I can go like crazy fast now. Because I'm pretty sure I know what's going on. Uh-oh. We got a knot coming in our yarn. We got a knot right there. Try to keep it on the inside. Ooh, it worked. Look at that. There's the knot, but it's on the inside. That's great. That's fortunate. Does not always work like that. Yeah, because the ears will go like right here. Oh my gosh, this is such a simple, quick little pattern. I love that. I love that. They have black skin. That's crazy. Wait, how does that work? Okay, wait. So if a polar bear has black skin, but translucent fur, but it's, n why is it not black? It's because like the translucence, like when it's put on top of each other, ends up looking white. That's crazy. Polar bears are weird. Do we want, yes, we do. We always want, we always want, I was gonna ask if we wanted to do the little tuft of hair on the top of the head, but it's like, come on. Yeah, of course we do. Of course we do, da do One, two, like that. Oh my God, I got a, I've got a cute idea. We do this little one, or we do this, this first one that's gonna be a little bit bigger than most bonimals because it's doubled up yarn. And then we do another one with just one strand of this yarn to see how tiny it gets for a baby one. And we make the baby one, we comb the baby one to make it really fluffy. That could be adorable. Six and then an increase. So I'm just basically doing the frog pattern with no bubble stitches for the eyes, making it way easier. What kind of brand of yarn are we using for the polar bear? We're using um, uh, worsted weight wool for the for the polar bear here. Um, I believe a good version of this would be Patton's Classic Wool. I really like that one a lot. This might actually be that, but I'm not. Yeah, this actually might be Patton's classic wool. But I'm using wool because, well, first off, I'm using wool because I, I always really like to use natural fibers if I can. But also because I want to, um, I want it to be a little bit fuzzier. And the cotton, cotton yarn isn't really fuzzy, you know. So that's why, that's why I went with the wool. And then we'll do a leg, leg. I mean, polar bears are pretty much all white, right? We'll give them a Coca-Cola. <laughs> no, we won't. We won't. We don't need to support Coca-Cola. They got enough. Like that. Let's do, I'm gonna do the nose. I'm gonna do a little nose right now, because I just, I really want to see what it looks like. So I'm just using a, just barely any black yarn. Okay. 
And I think we can actually just do one single strand across the nose in black. Oh my gosh, that is so easy. Look at that. Like sudden, that alone to me went like, oh yeah, this is a, this is clearly a, <laughs> a polar bear. go oh so cute so cute years ago over there oh my gosh look at that that's so polar bear little eyes adorable all right let's keep going now we're at the trickier er part um before i actually i think i should do a bobble stitch for the tail right because do polar bears have tails No, Morgana, I, you are not incorrect. You are totally doing it right. Um, the the way that we hold our crochet hooks, Morgana, is called the spoon grip, and it makes it way, way easier for crocheting amigurumi. Um, a lot of people do the pencil grip. Uh, I don't like that grip at all. I think it's extremely difficult to use. Um, polar bear tail? Question mark? Oh, they do. They got a little, they got a little bloop. They got a little bloop. Actually, we might be able to actually just use one of these for the tail. What do you think? This little tail like this, or a bobble. Actually, let's just do a bobble stitch. It's so much easier. Okay, so we don't have to sew anything on if we do that. So we go for a tail. You know what? I do a tail in the bunny tail. So let's go back all the way over to there. Yes, okay, so it's one, and then the tail with a mini bobble. Easy, oopsies. Easy as long as you don't mess up. And yes, polar bear with the Santa hat, of course, of course. One, two, we'll do a little tiny little bump. See, and now he's got just, we'll just do the tiniest little tail for him. All right, so that's the tail there. Now is the fun part. We're gonna do our our feet. So we're gonna do back leg first. One, two, oops, three, four. Pull through. One, and then front leg, one, two, three, four. Doubling this yarn was a great decision. It looks so good. Except for I'm running out of yarn, but I think we'll have enough, hopefully. One, two, three to get to the next arm. Little nubbin tails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that looks like a little nubbin tail to me. Okay. First arm, or second, third leg, my goodness. Okay, so go one, last leg, two, three, four. We're playing yarn chicken here, guys, but you know what? I think we're gonna win it. One, two, and then this should be the end of the round, three. Okay, so we got our legs on. We got our little nose there. We got to obviously add our ears and the eyes. Um, so let's start, let's try little tiny eyes first. 
Let's try six millimeter eyes and see how that goes. I have a feeling these are gonna be cuter than the big eyes, but we'll find out. Okay, little eyes. I think the little eyes can just go right here and right here. See, so, I mean, I, like, look at that. I feel like that is just so cute, especially when we add our ears on right after them. Those are some cute little eyes. Or, or, just just for reference, let's look at how these look. I, I do not think they're going to be as cute, but let's find out. They're kind of like, I always think that 8mm eyes, there's the 8mm eye. I just feel like that looks so fake. I, I mean, that's funny because we're crocheting something that is not real. But, you know what I mean? Like, it looks like a... To me, that looks like a doll's eyes, whereas these ones look like, I don't know. I just like the smaller ones more. And you know what? I'm the one making it, so I get to choose. And I choose tiny eyes, because they're cuter. And let's go ahead and unlock them on the inside, because I have decided. One big, one small. <laughs> No, I don't want to. That is cute. See, that's cute. Now let's do the little ears. I think we can do the ears. Do How far back do we want the ears? That's pretty cute. That's too close up and that's a little too high up on the head, I think. So I think back here is a good move. Let's try that. This part's gonna be a little bit trickier. Because there's so many little ed. He looks like Patrick ordering at the Krusty Krab. <laughs> what a strange reference. <laughs> I love it. So I think like right here, so one goes in here that I think I'm gonna try to do both the ears well let's see so this would be one ear I think the ears honestly I think the ears could have been even smaller than this this kind of looks like a mouse's ears. Let's, I, let's just see. Let's just, 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 let's just see. I need to grab another ball of yarn for this, but it'll be worth it. Get some idea of how the ears should look. Because if we want to do smaller ears, you know, I just want to see. Go one. So I did three single crochets in the magic loop for the ears, but let's try it with just two. One and two, just like that. Actually, okay, I've got one more idea for this ears, but that's what the tiniest ears will look like. Okay, even easier. I'm gonna put that to the side. One more try. One more thing. Is I wanna try to do even easier ears. Uh, and what I mean by even easier is just like, because you can't really see the detail anyhow. I think if I just do them the way that I do like buck teeth, then it'll be easier to sew on. So we'll do this. And we'll do chain one, two, three, and we'll just do a half double crochet in the first one we made right here. So like that. Because that'll be so much easier to sew on too. Okay, let's just see how that looks. So if we did it like that, 
Oh yeah, that's, oh, that's the ears. That's way easier too. I like it. Okay, let's just, let's just see what this one looks like sewn on and then we'll, if we like it, we'll make another one. Cause then we can just go on, like, we want one ear, one ear there, so. One and two. There we go. Like that. Right? That looks like a polar bear to me. Let's go ahead. I'm just gonna pull these knots in just a little bit to, cause it'll pull the ear in just slightly more. Maybe make it a slightly smaller ear. I'm just gonna double knot it and say, I like it. And hope that I'm telling the truth. Oh yeah, look at that. See, I like, I liked that. So I wanted it to be pulled in a little bit more so it didn't have as much like mouse ears. I think that's a good move. I think that's a really good move. Okay, next year, we'll do it the same exact way because that's super duper easy. <laughs> now this pattern I can come out with, I, I can probably do, like uh, come out with pretty soon because it's basically already part of the Bonhamel's patterns. And the reindeer's tricky. Like I, I would have to do, there's just, obviously there's more that goes into the reindeer, but this, bear is pretty easy so I think I could I think I could feasibly do this before uh, like pretty soon you missed the antlers part you know what naughty flowers I can I think I can say it out loud and tell you how to do it and then one, two, so we want one ear there, one ear there. Um, the antlers were, I chained eight. I skipped the first chain and worked into the back loops and I did two uh, slip stitches. And then I did a decrease, a sharp decrease, uh, kind of like a slip stitch two together into the next two chains. And then I chained three and I skipped the first chain and slip stitched into the next two chains. That made our second antler part. And then I slip stitched two more to get a little further on the main chain. And then I chained two and slip stitched into the first chain, to the back loop only the first chain. And then I slip stitched into the last chain on the main body of the chains. That's how I did the antlers. I did do like there, you know, you'll be able to go back and watch the video if you want, but I'm pretty sure that was the right like pattern. I wish I had it written out for you, but I don't. Oopsies, I pulled that ear a little too far. But that looks pretty good, I think, for a polar bear. We can add the, we can add the Santa hat after we're done with the polar bear though. So let's go ahead and sew it closed. Such a cute pattern. Okay. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna finish it up now. And then, and then we'll add our Santa hat. screaming in single crochet <laughs> yeah I love him too he's very cute and I, I I do think I can do this as a pattern soon especially because I need to re-record the snowman pattern uh, this week um, really I wanted to do it yesterday but I didn't so I'm gonna try to do it um I don't think I'll be able to do it today I get pretty wiped of doing like 
you know, recording stuff after the live stream. So I don't think I'll have the effort or the, the energy to do it today, but I might be able to do it Saturday. And in that video, maybe I can just like quickly do a, here's how to crochet a polar bear. Okay. God, that's so cute though. Oh my God. How have I never done a polar bear before? I don't know. All right, we need magnets. We need them. They're necessary. Very important. Start with that. Make sure that our, oh, you know what? Oh, you know what? I just got an idea. I just got an idea. Guys, I'm so smart. Wow, I got an idea. Wow, wow, great. This is great, great, great. I'm not gonna tell you yet because it's a good idea. You're gonna really like it. Do you like my song? I got a good idea though. And then we'll stuff it. You'll see my idea. You'll see. Some of you might be able to guess what my idea is. Go ahead. You can guess. I'll let you know if if uh, if you're right. But I got an idea. But your boy here's got an idea. We're not gonna do a baby Santa or baby uh, baby polar bear today. Um because we're gonna add the Santa hat instead. But you're gonna like this idea, I think. It'll work, I'm sure it'll work, probably. <laughs> I'm sure it'll work, probably. Most confident sounding statement ever. Uh, no, I just sent them all uh, notifications. I don't remember who the winners are off the top of my head right now because I sent them a few weeks, like last week or two weeks ago. Um, but I will, um, yes, if you won, you should know. Uh, I'll re-email everybody again about it, maybe. Okay, we wanna make sure this is where we want it to be. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we want to stuff them a little bit more and then add the bottom magnets and then we can work on the hat. Emma got it. Emma guessed. Emma guessed. Yes, that's the idea. I mean, how have I never thought about that before? Doing magnetic hats for these animals? They already have the magnets built in so that they stack on top of each other. If I just did little hats for them and put little magnets in the bottom of them, oh my God, now suddenly all these little characters can have little hats. That's the cutest idea ever. We're gonna do three magnets on the bottom just like our um, reindeer. Well, no, now that that is part of the plan, definitely, Onyx. Uh, to world domination via Bonimals, for sure part of the, part of our plan of, uh, of conquer, of conquering the planet with Bonimals. Bonimals, conquer the entire planet. One, there we go. Nice and closed. And then I'm just gonna go anywhere on the back. Like that. <laughs> okay. So he's done his head. The weird thing is his, his head magnet is like slightly skewed. So we need to unskewify it by using magnets like this there we go all right that works cool all right now our santa hat last thing today last thing we're gonna make today maybe all right we need we got a red yarn so we'll just go with red yarn we don't need a big Santa hat. We just need a little one. Hmm. 
No, we'll sew on a little fluffy ball at the end. Go one, two, three. I'm just gonna do a four single crochets. But my favorite Bonomo, I think the dragon. I don't even have a pattern for it yet, but I crocheted a dragon Bonomo and they are super cool. Um, do I have any right here? I have a golden dragon, yeah. This one. Look how cool this is, dude. Look at that. It's a golden dragon, are you kidding me? Are you joking? How cool is that? That's so cool. And they're so, they just look like little demons. <laughs> they look like they're gonna bite your little nose off. <laughs> I love them. Oops. <laughs> there we go. I think those are my favorite Bonimals so far. That's pretty easy. Just a small, let's see how big are we want to get with this. We got six. So maybe one more round out. Yeah. Um, white yarn. White. We're gonna do like a different kind of white so that way you can stand out on the polar bear. And I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna do half color changes because I wanna complicate things for myself. And because I have no, I have barely any room for detail so I need to do as much detail as I can in the smallest space possible. Unless we want to do a really tall Santa hat, but I think the idea of doing a little tiny Santa hat is actually cuter. It's actually cuter. Actually, it's kind of cuter. And then this way I can do a more simple. Yes, 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 yes. This will be very cute. All right. And then we'll do, actually, you know what? We'll do, no. Well, do you want to do a slip stitch there or? Yeah, sure. Okay. So we'll do a slip stitch in this one, like that. We can cut a red yarn. I don't think we need that anymore. We'll just stuff it up with red yarn. We've got quite a mess to clean up today after this live stream. There's a lot of a lot of threads and sh stuff around. You can't see them all, but like right off camera, it's just like <laughs> scraps. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna do a. I think I'll just do a single crochet like this. If I just do a little, or we could turn around and do it. Well, hmm. nah, let's do it this way. Let's do it how we're doing it. I'm just gonna do single, 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 and let's see how this is gonna look. See, so the idea is it's gonna be like the little white part of the hat, like that. 
Yeah, that'll work. I mean, slip stitches could honestly have worked though too. Let's see. Let's get another look. No, this works. I think this works. And I don't even think I need to do a round on the bottom to sew it closed. I think I can just straight up sew it closed around a around the magnet and we'll make it work. Because like this is the main part, right? And then we're gonna use all these back loops and we're just gonna sew it closed and it'll pull it down a little bit like that. And then we'll add a little ball at the top, just the tiniest ball at the top. I think that's totally gonna work, you guys. Okay. So we'll do a slip stitch in this one. Cut the yarn. We need enough to sew it closed. Pull that through. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this red one kind of shorter and cut this red one shorter because we don't need either one of them that we'll go ahead and stuff those bits into there I'm just gonna use the pencil because it's kind of easier to get those bits and bobs on there we uh, just came out with a few burb ones nemesis so I think we're taking just a small little break from burbs just for a sec Okay, so now we want to do, what we want to do is, we know we want it like that. Oh, I hope these magnets will fit in there. We really just need, I think just, maybe just one, but let's try to do two just to be safe. Let's see if we can't get two in there. It's gonna be a tight fit for sure. Okay, so we're gonna need to like, Yeah, it's gonna be a small fit. This might be tricky, but let's try it. I'm just gonna straight up try to just sew around this, like this. We're gonna go do a hidden end here. Stretching out the bottom of this Santa hat a little bit. Probably would have been nice to make it a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Is that right? Yes. Ah, stop. All right, we're gonna go. Well, I guess we could do. Yeah, okay, let's just do our old fashioned way of doing it. Boom. Two. Three, four, six. Oh, oh, there we go. Seven. All right, so let's see if this works. Just do it like that. Put the this in the Santa under those stitches far in there as I can and then pull it tight so that the magnet is under the stitches like that and hope that it'll no, not break the yarn it'd be really nice if we had a smaller magnet even but I don't know if I even have anything smaller than this honestly It's gonna break the yarn, isn't it? Better not. There we go. 
So it's not pretty, but you know what? It'll stay. And we're gonna fix up all this on the outside by really skewing it around. Ooh, it's starting to hurt my hand though. Because we really want the white to be covering it a little bit better. We just don't have very much yarn to work with. I should have done bigger. Oh well. It would have saved us some struggle. Saved us from the struggle bus. Just a little bit. Okay. But we didn't do that. So now we're on it. That struggle bus. It doesn't look bad though. Okay. Last thing we want to do for this little Santa hat is just a little ball. We just need a little tiny ball on the end of it. And then we'll that's gonna be the live stream. Alright, little tiny ball. This part's gonna be interesting. I think the way I can do this is just literally wind a tiny itty bitty ball of yarn, maybe. Around like a finger, like this. Okay, too tight. There we go. And then go fold that in half. Go around that a couple times. Fold that in half. Go around this a couple times. And turn it into this the tiniest ball of yarn imaginable, like that. Okay. Right? Tiny itty bitty ball of yarn sewn on top of the, like that. Cute. Okay. Put one through here and then we'll just take it through. Yeah, we'll just take it to the bottom. the other side through somewhere around here and out through the exact same stitch which is going to be tricky oh eh, never mind it work sometimes it just work all right wait there we go go through Nice. Double knot these two. One. Tiniest, idiest, bittiest Santa hat I ever did see. Go ahead and stuff that knot back in there. Or at least the edges of the knot. that the magnet's starting to flip which is weird and I don't know how to fix that but oh well Santa hat oh there we go and then we can just take it off put it on and then it'll go on anything Santa hat Ha 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 Pretty cute. Santa hat? Santa hat.
Santa hat. Santa hat. Let's see. Moose, you want a Santa hat? Santa hat. Oh my goodness. Why haven't we done those before? Because they're really hard to make, that's why. But honestly, that's really cute, so I'm not even mad. I'm not sure about the pattern yet, but perhaps. The Santa hat pattern's no joke. It's a little bit difficult to make just because it's like really tiny, but. So I think I could redesign the Santa hat a little bit better, but honestly, for a not knowing what I'm doing and figuring it out as I go, not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right, guys. I think that's gonna be the live stream for us. We got, now we have a little miniature polar bear and I'll work on the pattern for the polar bear. And a little miniature reindeer. I don't know if I'll be able to do the pattern for the reindeer before Christmas, but the polar bear I to totally can do. Yeah, the bears, the bear's pretty easy. Actually, the bear, I, I basically already have a pattern for it. So I'll work on that. I'll work on a polar bear pattern uh, and I might work on the little Santa hat too, but I'll definitely uh, work on the polar bear for you. Oh, so cute. I love the Santa hat thing. I can't believe I haven't done hats like that before. All right, guys, that's gonna be the live stream. Thank you so, so much for joining. Thank you everybody that has uh, that has tipped today and donated and just liked and subscribed. If you haven't yet, obviously make sure to like and subscribe. I will be back next Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, same time, same place. But next week we're gonna be making gift boxes and something to put in it. And I'm gonna have you guys help me decide what we make to put in it. Um, something small, obviously. Um, yeah. I'll see you guys next live stream uh, and uh, pasta la pizza. Happy hooking. And no, you hang up. Do I have a pattern for the moose? I don't. I just don't have a pattern for the antlers. The rest of the moose is part of the bottomless pattern, but the antlers aren't. So I'll have to come up with the pattern for the antlers there too. Um, and, uh, oh, actually, mm, actually, maybe like, you hang up first. Oh my god, stop. Uh, you hang up first. Oh my gosh. You are so bad. Oh, that's the wrong one. It's the right one. You, oh my gosh. Uh, no amaze feed. You hang up first. Have a great night, everybody. Happy December. See you next stream. <laughs> Bye, Froggy. Sorry, Onyx. I did put it on to the moose for a second, but yeah, sorry. No, you hang up. Okay, bye.